What is up, guys? We are back again with another video in the Passive Crossover Designer Series by Jeff Bagby. And in this one, we are going to show you how to make a three-way speaker system. Before we do that, let's go ahead and show you the speakers that we're going to be using and what type of speakers you should be choosing. Now, for a three-way system, you're going to need three speakers. You're going to need a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. Those are the most common speakers used in a three-way system. And so you're going to want to pick out speakers that you want to use to see if they work well together. First thing we're going to do is select a woofer. Now, I selected one for you. I selected the Dayton Audio 10-inch classic woofer is a great woofer, and for the price, it's, I think, unbeatable. It's $29. Once again, we're going to go to Parts Express. I love Parts Express. They, they make some of the greatest speakers, I think, um, and they have a wide variety of speakers. So we're going to try this Dayton Audio. We're also going to throw one of their uh, ND series in. They're going to do the 5 and a quarter inch mid-bass driver. This is the 140-8. It is a fantastic uh, mid-range, so we're going to throw that one in there too. And if you guys have been watching my channel, you know that I like the ND25 FA4. I used it in the sound bar that we made, uh, the Dayton Audio, all Dayton uh, sound bar. If you haven't got a chance to watch that video, watch it. I go ahead and I designed the crossover in this program, and, and it that tweeter is fantastic. All right, now let's go back to the the actual program and show you how to set this up. All right, you are going to need to change a couple settings before you get anything up. First thing to do is always look up here. When you look up here, it actually tells you what wiring is enabled. Now, if it says woofer plus tweeter, that means it's, it's set up for a two-way system. And as you see, it says parallel two-way. So if we move this to parallel three-way, notice what happens up here. Nothing. And that's because we haven't actually loaded the wiring yet. So if you click here and hit load wiring configuration, that should change. And it did. It says woofer plus tweeter plus mid-range. If it doesn't say woofer plus tweeter plus mid-range, you are not set up for a three-way system. So it will not work correctly. Uh, same if it doesn't say just woofer plus tweeter, you're not set up for a two-way system. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go ahead and load our speakers. You can load them in any particular order. There is no right or wrong way to, to put these in. Just make sure that you put the right speakers in. So we're going to go ahead and load the 250-8. We're going to load both the woofer and the ZMA file. And now we're gonna load the tweeter just because it's in order that way. One thing that you'll notice is the tweeter that we're using is actually a four ohm tweeter. So I get the question a lot that asks, you know, can you use a four ohm tweeter with an eight ohm woofer or an eight ohm mid range? And the answer is yes. The next question I get is, is does that make the speaker a four ohm speaker? And the answer is if you're using a passive crossover, the answer is no. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. There'll be another video to come for that, but just keep that in mind. The answer is no. All right, so let's go ahead and put this. So, so select whichever tweeter you want. You don't have to look for an 8 ohm or a 4 ohm tweeter. Now let's talk about where we want to cross over. Now I'm going to just show you on the woofer. I, I've shown you before where to cross over. Now typically with a woofer and a three-way system, you're going to be crossing over somewhere between 4 and 800 hertz. Some people cross over a little bit higher, but most people are crossing over somewhere in that range. Now we know from watching an earlier video that 2200 hertz, uh, we want to cross over before that. So by 1100, that's half of that breakup. Um, and honestly, if you take a look, the off-axis response uh, below 500 and below is really, really good. And so we're going to go ahead and cross it over by about 400 hertz and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and initialize that. And um, I am going to throw a, a Zobel on the woofer. Uh, typically, the woofer, you know, you may or may not need the Zobel. The, the best thing really to do, though, is to just set up all your frequencies that you want to cross everything over at and then work from there. And you know what? I'm going to keep this at 3,500. It was already set up that way. We're going to use second orders. Feel free to go to second, third, or fourth order crossovers, whatever. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice, and we're going to go ahead and do a second order at 400 and a second order at 3,500. A lot of people always say, can I just buy an already pre-built crossover? And the answer is always, yes, you can. Um, but let's show you why that may not be a good idea. Now, if you bought just a normal 400 and 3,500 hertz uh, crossover and just hooked it up like that with the three-way 
this is the frequency response you're going to get. Look at this. This is 75 down, like this is down to 75 and up as high as almost 100. Uh, yeah, that's going to be unlistenable. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be unlistenable. So uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One of that is phase, uh, and we can change that with the polarity. So if we just change the, the mid range, you're going to see that's going to change completely. Now, if you don't remember what that means. It means the mid range is going to be hooked up in inverse polarity. So the positive that usually goes to the positive of the speaker is going to be hooked up to the negative of the speaker in this particular case. You still have the issue the tweeter is going to be way too high, and there's going to be reasons for that. But the main reason that is is because it needs to be attenuated. Now, before we attenuate anything or before we lower the volume of either the tweeter or the mid range, there's something that we need to talk about, and that's called baffle step. Now, baffle step tells us that we're going to lose somewhere between three to six decibels of bass um, just by putting the speakers in a box. All right. Now, typically we use a baffle step correction circuit for that, and we've talked about that in the past on other videos. But in this particular case, we don't have to because it's a three-way system. And since it's a three-way system, the great thing about it is we can just have the woofer be three to six decibels higher. And that's what we're going to do. So if you take a look at this, this is about 88 or 89 at its highest point. And so what we're going to do is we're going to lower everything to about 85 decibels. If we can get the mid-range and the tweeter to play right around this 85 decibel range, we'll be set. And we shouldn't need a baffle step or very minimal if we need that. And so that's the first thing that you really need to pay attention with a three-way. You need to pay attention to, obviously, the polarity and, of course, as always, that baffle step. So let's go ahead and lower the um, – let's go ahead and lower this, which is the tweeter. Oops, went past the tweeter. Let's go ahead and lower the tweeter. I'm going to put it around 86 decibels. Um, usually if you put it at 85, that's, that's going to go too low. So let's go ahead and change the 86. And look, everything's looking pretty good, although we have this ridiculously huge hump. Why do we have that? Guys, this is where this driver response button is so important. When we click on this driver response button, it's going to show us what's going on. And if you take a look, it's showing, whoa, what the heck is going on here, right? And so it shows this ridiculous peak. And that's a problem with some of the ND drivers. ND drivers have these these peaks here. Now they're typically taken care of with a Zobel. So we'll try a Zobel here. I think we might have to um, mess with the Zobel a little. I don't think it's going to come out perfect, but let's just see what the Zobel comes out to and and go from there. And yeah, we're going to inverse the tweeter, but you see that the Zobel still still problematic. So we're going to we're going to mess with that. But if you notice, there's only a couple of areas that are problematic, but right now it's the Zobel. So let's let's work on the Zobel first. And um, first thing we're going to do – now, I like to keep it where we can actually see what's going on. So I'm going to lower the resistance on here. And that looks much better. See that dip's starting to go down. If you see – when we raise it, it goes up. When we lower it, it goes down. Now, the problem is – we just created a new problem, right? So by trying to circumvent one problem, which we did a great job. By the way, that, that right there is, is livable. You can live with that. If you wanted to lower it some more, you could. Um, but that's pretty livable. The problem is that we created this hump here now, and that's not livable. And so once again, unfortunately, sometimes when you try to fix a problem, you create a new problem, and that's just kind of the – problem with that. Now if we just add a resistor here on the inductor, that should take care of that. You know, a 1, a 1.5, maybe even a 2. We'll just take a look at it. We'll do a 2 first and see what that looks like. And you're looking – I mean, that that's looking good right there. I mean, we're right around 85. If you think that maybe you lowered that too much, all right, go ahead and do a 1. But it's going to be somewhere in that range right there. So yeah, that looks actually a little better. I like that better. Now, of course, you can do an RLC uh, notch filter here if you really, really want to work on that. And you could even do one here. Um, but that's going to be completely up to you. But that's basically a three-way crossover design, all right? It's that simple. It's very easy. Um, however, it's going to take a long time to get it 
somewhere where you really, really are going to like it. So um, we just took a couple seconds to build this. You know, we didn't even set our offsets. So once we set our offsets, that's going to change that just a little. But this is going to just get you in the mode of how to actually build that three-way crossover. Now, guys, go have fun. Uh, experiment with the drivers on Parts Express, and then of course after you experiment, buy some of the drivers, buy the crossover parts, and build yourself a custom crossover from the parts that you get from Parts Express. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please let me know, and as always, like the video and subscribe. Thanks. Double digit thousand.